Okay, so I want to start off on this where we left off yesterday. Okay, and as I just mentioned, I cleared up this appliance thing. I have my above grade cubic feet. So at this point, okay, I should have a subtotal in the orange on row on the section 14. I should have a subtotal for both my heating and my cooling loads. If you're doing this on paper, Okay, remember, I put some paper forms out there. If you are doing this on paper, you are at this point where this entire sheet is filled out. I've added a summary sheet for you if you're doing it on paper where you can now add all your rooms together and you can come up with your total building loads for heating and cooling. Okay, and then it's just a matter of carrying it down and filling out the rest of this form. Okay, all your formulas are over here. But if you're using the Excel sheet, which is the Manual J8 approved method, okay, and again, I'm giving you an option in this course, but if you're using the Manual J8 sheet, we're at this point. Now, we have to talk about, we have duct losses, we have duct gains. Duct losses and duct gains are where the duct work is going into an unconditioned space. If your duct work is running in an unconditioned attic for second floor or first floor cooling, if your duct work is running underneath um, a mobile home, if your duct work is running in an unconditioned basement, we do have duct losses and duct gains. Okay, now the yellow tab here in section 15 allows you to basically choose where your duct, where the majority of your duct work is running. For example, if your duct work is running in a conditioned space and doesn't go into an unconditioned area, or if you're going to be able to run, if you're using this for planning area, you can use 7F ducts are in a conditioned space. Okay, um, crawl spaces. Okay, so again, crawl spaces, floor to ceiling in a in attic, okay, supply air in attic, return air someplace in a chase, closed crawl space or unconditioned basement. Okay, this is the one I would use if I were doing a mobile home, 7D. 7C, okay, we're putting everything into the attic. It, what, it, what about... What about a split system? Like, for instance, um, you and I talked about the house that I'm in. I would put a uh, air conditioning unit in the basement for the first floor because I have the uh, uh, hot water radiators, and I would put a heat pump in the attic for the second floor because there's no heat. The basement is a heated space. The attic is not. Do I have to do it as two separate systems? Hello? 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 Hey, you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. Okay, you were sorry. the one who went away. <laughs> no, and I know it. I, w I was prepared for it this time. We're having Comcast is playing with Internet lines around here for some reason. I don't get it, but this is a daily uh. occurrence. So anyway, I did hear your question. Supply and air on two different floors. Supply 
two systems basically one in attic one in basement attic is unconditioned honestly for this one i would err on the side of caution and i'd consider myself going into an unconditioned um unconditioned attic basically and then when you do because the duct loss is not that big difference in your heat loss but i'd rather be on the safe side if that makes sense yeah, okay, so do this as if I'm just putting everything up into the attic, but when I do this for real for the house, do I, I mean, do I basically just do this exercise twice, one for the basement and one for the attic? You can, or you can just accept the fact, if you, we look at it, if we look at the difference in numbers, I'm going to select ducts in a conditioned space there. Okay, and there's no heat there's no heat loss, okay, so that would be your basement. There's no heat loss or gain. If I go into the attic, it's only seven hundred and forty four BTUs of heat and five seventy six of cooling, not not even half a ton of diff not even half a ton of difference. So um, because remember twelve thousand BTUs is a ton. So honestly you could probably just get away with selecting unconditioned and be fine okay it is so close if you look at that number it's not a major number i mean is is unconditioned that's 7d that's 7 excuse me unconditioned 7d is in dog 7f sorry no 7f as in frank is unconditioned Oh, or, sorry, ducks sorry, in. 7F is conditioned. Yeah, 7F is conditioned. Um, use 7, um, because you're going to do everything in the attic. Use 7A. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, if you're, anybody else who's listening to this, if you're on a two, if you're in a two-story building, Okay, you have to figure out where you can run ductworks. If it's new construction, you can get away with running your second floor ductwork through the floor joists. Okay, and come up because you're in an area that you heat more often than cool. So you can run them in the floor and use floor registers. If you're putting air conditioning into existing construction, you really can't get into the floor joists without doing major ceiling damage on the area below so you almost have to figure out a way to get the ductwork into the attic and then come across the attic if you remember one of those blueprints we looked at when we were talking about the ductwork and the supply return you have to use chases so it's a matter of where you can get the ductwork or you use two systems like dave was just talking about make sense okay so once you have this in here, okay, you've now taken care of your duct loss or duct gain. If you want to get crazy, you can try to figure out the installed square footage of duct work. Okay, you can't do that at this point. That takes a manual D calculation, and we're not going into manual D. Okay, our job here is to get a total heat load and select the amount of equipment and get an idea of where we're going to place the diffusers. So you're going to leave everything as a default one. Now, what house in your area does not have a furnace other than those of you who do have electric heat? Most houses have a furnace, right? So if you have a furnace in your house or if you're going to use gas in our planning, okay, or oil or propane, I need you to click off furnace. If you're going to use a water heater, okay, other than electric, I needed to click off, what, what about you? off water heater. What about you have a, a, a heat pump? What was that? What about you have a heat pump? If you have a heat pump, yeah, if you have a heat pump, don't click anything off. Okay, this is looking for combustion air. Do you know what I mean by combustion air? Yes. Okay, so if you have a heat pump, don't click. If you don't have any fuel burning appliances in your house, like don't click these off if you don't have fuel burning appliances. 
If you have fuel burning appliances, click these two. And then I want you to come over to this yellow drop down that initially says none. And I want you to click the 25 CFM. Make sense so far? Okay. Our next line is 19. Okay, our next section is 19. Whenever you run a motor, you generate heat. Okay, it's just the fact of the life. Whenever you run a motor, you um, generate heat. Unless you are absolutely sure of the piece of equipment or unless you have a mechanical engineer telling you how much heat the, the motor gives off, you're going to choose manufacturer's performance data has no blower heat discount. In other words, we want to add in a little bit of BTUs because those blower motors do get warm over time. And the air that cools the blower motor is the air that's going through the air handler. So select manufacturer's performance data has no heat or no blower heat discount. All this means is we do have to take our 1700 BTUs into account in our cooling mode. In heating, it really doesn't matter because we're adding heat to the air, which is what we want to do in heating. Okay, any questions on that portion? I can get in value um and now in, I can get in value um in the subtotals. Okay, where does the value start? Which is the first line you're getting the value in? Hold on. Let me check, hold on. Um let me go down here. Um uh, in the ceiling. Up in uh, um, ten. Um, in the in area ten. When yep. we're done with this call, would you please email me your sheet? Yes. Okay. Hang on to it before we're done with the call, but when we're done, email it to me and I'll take a look at it. Okay. Okay. So you're going to end up with sensible heat gain or loss. What do I mean by sensible heat gain or loss? Anybody? Isn't it what you can feel? Yeah, it's what I can feel. There's no latent heat taken into account at this point. Okay, section 21 deals with latent heat. Okay, it's automatically going to fill. Now, if you walk into a house that has, um, that has significant a number of plants in here, um, you need to sort of guesstimate how many plants are in this house. Okay, um, And you just put the number of small, medium, or large plants into the white areas because plants give off a lot of humidity, okay? And there's a lot of humidity involved with plants. Um, I actually, funny story having to do with this, I actually did a heat load of a house in Massachusetts where the guy had, um, shall we say, plants that weren't quite legal plants at the time, and I did have to take into account 25 relatively large plants um, and get it into the heat load. So um, plants make a difference if you have a ton of plants, okay? Everything else comes in here, and now we're down to, once you have this all filled out, you're down to what my late total latent gain is. Okay, so this is my sensible gain. This is my latent gain. Why does this matter at this point? Why do I care about those two numbers? Anybody? Why do I care about those two numbers?
Did I lose you all again? Uh, is that going to have a lot to do with dealing with humidity in the house, as well as the uh, actual feel uh, heat you feel? Um, I actually, from my perspective, I really care about these two numbers because of equipment selection. Okay, my air conditioning unit has to be able to both remove that sensible heat, but also deal with the latent heat. So when I'm sizing this equipment and when I'm looking at units, okay, I have to have both. So once you get your values all the way down here, okay, and once your room by room is done and everything adds up, this sheet, this form, J1, is done. You can come over to the summary page. You're going to have more in here because I've been using this as an example. Okay, but you're going to have heat loss, heat gain. You're going to be able to come all the way down to your bottom and find out what your total sensible cooling load is, what your total latent is, and what your total um, cooling load for the entire building is. Okay, this last line here is the tons basically is the BTUs of your air conditioning. You divide that last line by 12,000 BTUs, and that tells you how many tons of cooling you need. Okay? Sensible heat under heat loss, that's the size of the output of the furnace or the output of whatever heating system you use. Okay? So, again, your part five of this is, part five basically is you're wrapping this up. You're giving me this summary page. Okay, everything is complete for this spreadsheet. Okay, and it's a matter of just plugging in numbers. Okay, if can you, you have, uh, 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 if you're doing. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Can you? Can you? You're saying that the, the sensible heat, which is which is what we feel, obviously. Uh, and then the latent heat. Yeah. So this this total cooling load, mine's 12,262. Okay. Okay. Yup. Now you did it. You did your whole house, or you did you did your whole house? No, I I no, well, I did the first floor. The house is 3,700 square feet. Okay. I didn't I didn't do the second floor. No, no. That's, I, did, I just wanted to verify. Okay. Yeah. So that is your tonnage of air conditioning based on the numbers you entered for right. the first floor. So first floor is a one ton is a little bit over a one ton system based on the number you just gave me. Okay. Now you you've told me a few times either on the call or separately you have a very tight construction house. Okay. It, yeah, it it's 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 decent. I mean, when you go into the attic, uh, you can feel because they've got the uh, ridge vents and, um, you know, dormers and everything. It's, it gets a decent amount of movement up there. The, um, uh, the basement, all, the whole basement is below grade, but the front is dug out with a little, with steps that go up to the yard. And it's got like a little, uh, uh, like a little patio walk, if you will, about four feet three feet wide up front of it. So that front wall is exposed to wind, but it is, but it technically it's below grade. It's just not buried under dirt. So it's exposed. It's got a window, it's got a door, um, but it's heated. Okay. So yeah. So your, your house is a relatively tight house. One ton of air conditioning based on what I've seen on your numbers for the first yeah. floor makes a lot of, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay, because it's tight. You don't have a lot of infiltration. I would have expected it to be much higher, but okay. Well, remember, again, now, when you add your second floor in, okay, that may change a little bit. But one ton on your first floor makes sense to me. And if I see anything obvious on your sheet when you send me the final one, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, what did you do your heating show up as did you get do you have enough to get that did it show up on your summary yet what's your heat loss uh heat loss on the summary where now that's not lower heat gain where's the heat loss on this just give me a subtotal on it's on line 
nine. Um, give me your subtotal if you have it on line 20 under heating BTUs. Oh, I'm back to J1 form then. Yeah, go to go to J1 because I don't think we have it complete enough that your summary numbers are all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Um, total sensible loss and gain. <clears throat> Heating is 14,493. Cooling is 10,738. Okay. The heating you're, again you're breaking up a lot. sounds a little bit low, so I'll glance at your numbers. I'll uh, yeah, my internet. As I said, I'm on a cell phone connect right now. Um, my heating, your heating, is really a little bit lower than I'd like to see it. Dave. Okay. Your heating, your heating is a little bit lower than I'd like to see it, but I want to take a look at your sheet because again, your house is a really tight construction house. I mean, you're you're dealing with Amish construction that's really tight. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, again, the summary page down here on the bottom is where we're talking about our totals. Okay. So, your total sensible load on the heat loss column. Okay. Where my number is 8, 7, and let me blow this up a little bit because that way you guys can see it. My number is 8758. Okay, and again, I don't have my whole house in here. Okay, it's down here on the bottom. That's your sizing of your furnace for that area. Questions? Do I need to repeat anything? Because I know I broke up a little bit in here. I know it. So is there anyone that needs me to go over anything else on the J1 form or the summary? Just one thing I was looking at on my summary just now. Under okay. for the ceiling, I know I had spoke to you about it being like a flat black roof. Yeah. And I expected to see a lot of heat gain, but I only see 1.06% in that column above, uh, across from ceilings on the summary. What's the number? What's one, the, not the percent, the, the it says Not one, the percent, the BTUs. Yeah, it says 119. Okay, we looked at the insulation. What did we select for that type of ceiling back on J Bay? Back on your ceiling. Let me see. On your yellow tab for ceiling. Yeah, there. Yeah, what did we select? Well, that wasn't really a selection as much as you typed in what whatever yeah, you... Yeah, what did we... I selected what did a we, value of 0. 0.05, and I was confused. I was pretty sure this is the number that's wrong. The CLTD, one of the charts gave me a number of three, but I didn't have any perspective on whether that seemed okay. seemed wrong. Hang on. I'm looking. I'm looking at the chart right now. Bear with me one sec. Everyone just, I'm sorry, but let me see if I can. CLTD, that would be cooling load temperature difference? Yeah, it's the cooling load temperature difference. But Shouldn't that be 30 or 55? Yeah, it should be a higher number. Um, but he has a he has a different situation here. Um, change your CL, change your CLTD to thirty seven. Let's see here. All right. And then go back to the J one form and see what see what that does. Now we're showing like. 1,578 BTUs, 12.3%. It's a little more realistic, but I still, my windows are still showing at like 43.5% for that heat gain. That makes more sense. Is that close? Because the ceiling then says 12.3 compared to this, uh, all the windows and glass at 43%. I'm 
I almost half, in, you know, intuitively expected it to be close to the amount of the windows. I have more win. Windows will have more gain than even your roof does. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I'm it. A, you know, particularly difficult issue to overcome during the heating season, or the cooling season, rather. Yeah, I am, I am counting. Now, again, your construction is a little bit different. I'm counting that there's insulation in there, and I'm counting that there's an air gap in there. Yeah, for sure on the okay. air gap. Um, because normally they... So, I'll look at the sheet, and if I see anything obvious, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. That at least puts it closer in the ballpark. I knew that one number was way off. Everything else looks okay, though. Okay, yeah, that's what I mean about the reasonability check. Remember, I said yesterday, you need to do a reasonability check. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of what I mean in ability check. Now, for those of you who are using the paid forms, that completes the form. For Again, for those of you using paper forms, that completes the form. Okay? Um, L sheet or the paper form. After this, we go into a very two very simple steps, and that basically wraps it up. Okay, the first step we do, let me find my floor plan. Remember this from way back when, when we first started this, my nasty little floor plan I drew? What you're basically going to do on your own floor plans is you have to figure out in each room, oops, let me get to, in each room, I want you to figure out where you're going to place your supply duct, Okay, and where you're going to place, and remember, supply duct has X through it, and then where you're going to want to put a return duct or return register. Okay, so on your floor plans, for any room that's a conditioned space, I want you to figure out where you're going to want to put your supply and return. Now, what matters? What do you need to look at on where your supply and return is? Why do I care? Well, we're going to we're going to need to um you know, look at uh uh you know, heat rising and cool falling, uh cool falling. Uh cold air uh uh falling, we're going to need to look at how that moves. We're also going to need to look at um you know, where I guess uh, the thermostat's going to be placed. Yeah, you're definitely right on the air movement, okay? Do I want to put a supply and return duct right next to each other? No. No, because I want to create an air pattern. Where's your coolest or warmest spaces in a room always? Like if you're looking at the purple room, where's the, on my sheet, where's the coolest and the warmest spaces always? Well, the coolest is going to be out near that corner near the window on the exterior walls. What about the warmest on the summer days? Would be, would be near the door in the corner. Well, actually, would be in the middle of that interior wall. Yeah, sort of. It's going to be near the windows, right? Because That's this the... is where I'm going to have the most heat loss and heat gain. Oh, okay. Okay, my areas over in this area are going to be more stable temperatures because they're on the interior. So where I want to put my main cold air or main warm air is someplace along the outside walls. Okay, so if you look at a house, the way houses, if you have baseboard heating or if you have forced air heat, most often your supply registers and return registers are on, supply registers are piping is on the outside wall. Your return is either in every room near the inside walls 
or you have a main central return someplace in the in near the furnace. I do not suggest the main central return for this project. I do not want you to use one. I want a supply and return in every room, and there's two exceptions on the returns. What are those two exceptions? Where don't you put a um, return? Anybody? Near a fireplace? Kitchen and bathrooms. I don't put a return in a kitchen or bathroom. Because I don't want the if, odors. If you have an open air, I mean, my dining room, living room, kitchen, and hall are pretty much open. Um, am I still doing a return and um, supply in each? I would pick some, I would, depending on the size, and you know your house better than I do, depending on the size, I would put one as a return on an inside wall or inside floor, like as far away from the kitchen as you can possibly get without going to an outside wall, pick a, pick a central location someplace along a wall. And then I would put supplies in all the rooms. Okay. Don't put the re don't put the return right next to the kitchen. It's a bad idea. Okay. So what you're going to do, this is this is where we're going for part 6, which is the final part of the project. You're going to place the supplies and the returns where you think they're going to go. Okay? And then you're going to because and you're going to also take a look at your CFMs, okay, your cooling CFM, which is room by room on your spreadsheet, okay, is needed in that space. Now, if you have a space that needs 600 CFMs, okay, if you have a space that needs a ton of CFMs, either between your manual DCFM or your cooling CFM, FM, you might need to put two registers. For example, Dave, in your combination living room, kitchen, and dining room, okay, I would not put one register. I'd put more than one grill for spreading that heat around a little bit because if you just put one supply grill in there, it's going to be way too loud. It's going to move too much air. People are going to get cold or hot depending on where they're at. Right, okay, understand. So Okay, so we need to identify how much CFM, and you need to take a look at, do I need one register or two? Okay, do I need one return grill or two? Okay, rule of thumb, again, no return grill in the bathrooms or the kitchen. Kitchen, because of grease and cooking odors. Bathroom, because of odors. You don't want to put returns in those areas. So you're going to lay out the supply and return. Any questions on that? Okay. So that takes care of the duct, the return and supply grill placement. Now the next part of this is where you can start getting a little bit creative. Okay, you need to look around your house, and I don't care about what's there now. I care about your perfect world. I need you to put in where your air handler is going to go or furnace, and I need you to put in where your outside unit's going to go. Okay, and again, this is a per this is in your perfect world. Where would your furnace go, and where would your outside unit go? Okay, so for example, if this is a bedroom here. Do I necessarily want my condenser to go right there? No, because that's, of noise. Yeah, the noise. Because that unit's going to cycle on and off all night. So if I, have, if I have a spot to put it, okay, what about right there? Saying that's a bathroom. My, this is a bathroom. Would it work better there? 
Yeah. Yeah, who cares about that? It's insulated sort of from the bedroom. However, if my air handler or my furnace has to go here, what problem am I going to run into? Extremely long line set. Very long line set. So you have what I want you to do is in your best opinion, decide on where you're going to place your air handler or furnace and outdoor unit. Now, if you're going to put it in a basement, still show it wherever you're going to put it. If it's like a basement right there, which is like perfect, just tell me in the description it's in the basement. Okay, so draw it on your floor plan, but you can put a note next to it in basement or something like that. Okay, because if you have a basement, that's where you want your equipment to be. If you have an attic, that's where you want your equipment to be. Okay, because that way I'm minimizing space that I've taken up inside what we consider sellable space. Okay, I would not put an air handler or furnace in the middle of my basement. Okay, I keep it off to one side. Why do I say that? Why don't I want to put it in the middle of the basement? What about if someone wants to remodel their basement? Okay, we need to keep things like that in mind. Questions on equipment placing? Anybody? Okay. The next part of this is where you guys can take this however far you want it to go. Okay. In the course, under the equipment, Okay, which I have um, equipment selection, which I've made available to you. I put two manufacturers' websites. You don't have to stay with these. It's your choice. If you want to go to another manufacturer, you can go to another manufacturer. But when you go to, for example, AirTemp, okay, you're going to get to the AirTemp website, okay, and you can go to their literature library. Okay, you select a product type. Okay, let's say air conditioner or heat pump. Okay, either way, you can search the products. The sears are all here. We want to be as efficient as possible. And then you can view the product information. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to download that product information. It will open in PDF Expert or whatever you're using to view PDFs. Okay. What it does, it actually gives you sizing tables. It tells you what the model number, model identification codes are, and then it tells you what the dimensions are. But that's not what I'm really worried about. What I'm really concerned about is down here, okay, for your sizing, okay? You have your capacities here, okay? You have your outdoor unit model number, and then you have your indoor unit model number. Based on our heat load, we know what, it, then we can figure out our outdoor unit, okay? And we have to match. Okay? And I want you to be able to come up with the with the, what the CFM based on your house's total CFM requirement, which is on your summary page. I need you to tell me what air handler model number 
and what outdoor unit model number you can use. And I know there has to be questions on this. Anybody well, when you're saying, I mean, I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be multiple options. I mean, of as course. long as we pick one that works, you're you're happy with that. I am happy with it because guess what? At that point, you guys have achieved the purpose of this course. To get to the end. Yeah. The equipment selection is the last portion that you guys have to do with the exception of one more short discussion board to complete the course. Uh, what's this that we're looking at, the expanded cooling performance? Loose yeah, coil? basically for here, okay? These top tables here where I have my outdoor unit based on my capacity, and then I have an indoor unit, okay? You see my indoor unit model numbers? We can only see part of your screen. There, there. Okay, so you have an outdoor unit that's based on total capacity. That's your BTUs of cooling. You have your indoor unit that has to match the outdoor unit. Okay, follow so far? Yeah. Then, just to verify, you see where I have two indoor units here that both do 24,000 24, BTUs, and I have a whole bunch of them down here that do 24,000 BTUs or 30,000 BTUs. So you have multiple selections, okay, for indoor units based on your outdoor unit. You have to come down to the next chart. Tell me when it shows up. And there's multiple charts, okay? Do you, do you see the there. next chart yet, Dave? Yeah, it's there. Okay. Okay, so... You see the left-hand column says CFM. Yeah. When you look at your summary sheet, it tells you the total CFM required for cooling. Okay, your summary on your spreadsheet. We yeah. need to make sure that the heat load, which is the 24,000 or whatever you come up for your total heat load, and the CFM can be handled by both the outdoor unit and the inside unit, the air handler. That's all I care. Say that again, I lost you here. Questions. I Say know. Again, I what was that? Can you repeat that? I lost you there. Right Alex, now. what was that? Okay, I care about the outdoor unit size, which is the top table that I showed you, like the 24,000, the 30,000, the 36,000 BTUs, that's your size of the unit, matches the CFM required for your building using the summary page of your spreadsheet. If you look at the summary page, Okay, there's a total CFM required. It's on the top portion of your summary page, right, at, right after it adds up all your room CFMs. That has to match or be under or as close as possible to the left-hand column of the sheet you're looking at right now. Now, okay, the temperatures on top, the, the out, uh, outdoor temperatures on top, are they the worst, are they the worst case scenario? Yes, they're your worst case scenario. So you guys are designing for 95 degrees when you look at this chart. Remember our design temperatures at the top of J1, at the top of that first sheet? I think yours is actually like 91 degrees or something like that, based on where your where your actual house is. 
I think Lancaster was a little bit different than York. Okay, on the top of your J1 sheet, it tells you what your design outdoor temperature is. Okay, so like I think some of them are 91 degrees. I would always go to 95. I would never go under. I would never select the 85. Understand. I left mine at York, even though I'm in Lancaster County. Yeah, I know several um, people had Lancaster on there, and I know it was a little different. Okay, Alex, are you okay? Yes, um, the only thing that I have is the value thing. That's the only thing that... Yeah, okay. So send me your sheet afterwards. Does everybody understand where we're going with this and what you guys need to do? for part six, which will become available, I think, tomorrow, but maybe I'll just make it available earlier. Part five, you're going to send me your completed spreadsheet. Part six, you're going to put in your registers and grills where they need to go, okay, and then you're going to select the equipment, and you're going to give me the equipment make, model number, okay, and give me both the air handler and the um, and the out the condenser the outdoor unit okay are we going are we going to ultimately run the conduit or, or the duct work as well in this design no we're not once you have the cfm is once you have the cfs of the cfms of the outlet that's where we're going to stop because duct work sizing is we actually take care of that in the trade skills course more okay I just sent my okay. sheet, so you should get it now. What was that? I just sent you cheat. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look as soon as we're done here. Okay, guys, this is basically at this point, we've done some ductwork sizing, so you can easily go back to the sizing tables that we did, and you can take a look at the ductwork sizing. Um, you're going to touch ductwork sizing again. When you have your gas heat term and do your trade skills course, you're going to definitely go over ductwork sizing again if you haven't already. Okay. Um, but remember, we did do some with ductwork sizing. We went over feet per minute. We went over CFMs. We went over pressure drops. Okay. And we've talked about branch line sizing as well. Go back into the earlier portion of the course and you can find all the tables. So if you want to mess around with this on your own or if you want to add sizes for ductwork and branch lines you guys do have the information to do it okay um, but for this wrap up I just want to know what equipment and I want it to match the sizes of your building and the heat load of your building and I want you to place it properly um, let me tell you what's happening over the next couple days okay Okay, I, I am basically giving you time to do your projects. Okay, I need to get these handed in. They have everything has to be submitted to me by, by Monday at 1 p.m. Okay, that's when I have to submit grades and close out the course. So what you have out there right now, okay, final project part five is your completed for spreadsheet. Basically, put in the infiltration numbers, make sure all the missing values um, are done, and if you need me to take a look at a sheet, I'm happy to do so. Just email it to me and tell me what the issue is. Um, I will, I'll be checking my email on an off-call day. I want to help you guys with this as much as I can. Okay, then you're going to come down here, okay, and we're going to talk about, and you're going to come down here, and I've given you, if you wanted to take a look and see exactly what grills you need, I've given you a link to Hardin Cooley. That's the main grill manufacturer. Okay, it actually tells you how many CFMs each type of grill can handle. It's a good link to have, even though if you don't use it now, it's a good link to have. Okay, I've given you air temp down here. Okay, I've given you air temp in Mitsubishi. Okay, you can use train, you can use carrier. I just have a tougher time finding their sheets. That's why I use air temp. By the way, air temp is made by train. Um, 
Mitsubishi I gave you because some people are in a situation you may want to use ductless splits. I'm fine with that as well. It's actually, you can do it on a room-by-room -room basis. There's a lot of good information there. Um, then on Friday, okay, Friday, you will have the final, the final project submission, which is part six, which is basically your floor plan showing locations of outdoor units, showing location as grill, showing locations of equipment, okay? That's base, and I want you to just make sure that you've given me the full project, okay? Then I'm going to ask you sometime between Friday and Monday, because Monday is the official last day of the course. Between Friday and Monday, I want you to watch four videos that are here. Guys, I know some of you are going to do it. Some of you are not going to do it. But please do me a favor. Watch the four videos. For those in the night class, they'll be posted in your course as well. Okay? Watch the four videos. Okay? It gets us back into the mindset of basic electrical. Okay? And that's where you guys are going to be starting in, your, in the 417 course on Wednesday of next week. I'm asking you to do a discussion board post, okay, on um, over between Friday and Monday. I don't care when you do it, okay. This will become available on Friday. Basically, I'm asking you to think about everything we've covered this term and tell me how it fits into your role as a service technician and where you think this stuff will be useful. There's no correct answer other than the fact that, A, there is a word count requirement on it, which isn't tough to reach. And B, I do need you to respond to two other people. This is the final discussion board, and I, it covers the fact that I do have to have some written, um, written part of the final project. Any questions? We, um, in, the, in the night class, of course, we're, you know, we're going to be doing the same thing. We'll just be doing it on that discussion board. Um, we can only answer legitimate comments and questions. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'll 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 deal. Put it that way. I'll I'll make sure we deal. I might ask okay. it. In, we might ask it in a different way in that class. The directions may be a little bit different. Okay, so. Um, this stuff is actually pretty important. Um, any questions on where we're going? We're going to meet one more time tomorrow. Okay? We're going to meet one more time tomorrow morning, Friday and Monday. I have one thing I want you to do. I want you to watch the videos, and I want you to wrap up your projects, and I want you to get something good handed in to me. Make it a quality work you're handing in to me. Okay, um, I want to see the effort. Any questions? Oh, and I should say Friday and Monday, you do have to check into the course. I do need to see activity in the course on both days, so don't just consider terms over today and be done with it. I, I, we, we have Thursday tomorrow. We're all going to get together again in the morning. Then Friday and Monday, I have the discussion boards, I have the videos for you to watch, and I have the final project submission that I need you to do. Okay, um, I'm trying to give everyone enough time to get this done. I know how your schedules are. Again, any questions, and I'm going to turn off the recording on this. Oops.